What's good, everybody? Time for a deal short. Now, um, I don't normally talk about movies and stuff like that, but um, I love movies. I love good storytelling. I love sci-fi. I love all of it, bro. Every genre, bro. Period pieces, um, you know, historical movies, you know, movies based on, loosely based on historical events. I love all of it. If it's a good story. If you tell a good story, I'm all in. Disney doesn't seem to understand that. They just don't. You look at what Disney has done with Marvel and what they have done with Star Wars, especially now, it's just ridiculous. As you know, as I'm filming this, the Acolyte episode three is on. I can't watch that. It's just horrible. I gave up on Disney Plus right after The Mandalorian. I did. I just, I could see the writing on the wall. I did watch some Boba Fett, you know, the book of Boba Fett. Watched The Mandalorian. Um, I'm a huge Ahsoka fan. The character, Ahsoka Tano, from the time that she met Anakin, Snips in the Sky Guy, all the way up until Rebels and all the rest of it. But the story writing that's coming out of Hollywood now, that's coming out of Disney, is just horrific. It's just horrific. I don't understand for the life of me how Kathleen Kennedy is still employed. She has absolutely destroyed that world that Lucas created. Absolutely destroyed it. When you hire people, that don't even understand the stories they're being told or don't even know the history. They don't know the world and they just come in and yeah, we're just going to do this. And I just picked the color lightsaber because I like the color. It was pretty. What? You know, people from that world love those characters to the point where they cry when they see the characters, if you do it right, you draw so much emotion out of the fans of the Star Wars franchise that they cry as like family to them. Generations of people who have grown up on Star Wars. And now they've given up. Now I believe that those people will come back. I believe that if someone were to tell a good story from that world, that people will come back like this. You would have tens of millions of people watching, tuning in, loving it, right? Um, Rogue One, perfect example. Rogue One came from out of nowhere, one of my, my favorite Star Wars stories ever. Didn't know any of the characters. Didn't know any of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was a couple they threw in there that you were familiar with, but the main characters didn't know any of them. But they told a good story, and I was invested from start to finish. Why were we so invested? Because we'd heard about the mission to get the plans that showed the vulnerabilities of the Death Star. We've known that since the beginning of the story. We've known that, but we never knew what that mission was. And then they told the story in Rogue One. They went and got some really good screenwriters and really good writers, and they got an amazing director. Can't name any of them. But I just know what that project they did so well. They got great actors. Casting was amazing. The way they told that story to me was just, oh, man, it was perfect. It was so perfect. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I was bought in on Star Wars. Clone Wars. I tell all my friends. Again, I'm not a hardcore Star Wars person, but I've watched Stone, uh, Clone Wars. You got to watch the Clone Wars. Amazing writing. Man, they take you through so much. You really want to understand what was up with the clones, what was up with the uh, the battles that were going on with Rex and Fives and all the rest of them. You want to see Ahsoka grow up. You want to see Anakin become the Jedi Knight he was supposed to be. And then when he failed, it just made it so much more real. Right? Just, uh, man, like, it's... Great stories. The Bad Batch, another great story, right? Just a 
you know, the spinoff. Now, there's some, you know, it was some bad stories. There's some one-offs here and there, a lot of animated stuff out there, whatever. But overall, they were doing great work. Then Disney got a hold of it. They bring in this lady, and it was just garbage, man. It's just garbage. And it has nothing to do with old white folks. I'm not an old white dude. I'm just a guy who loves good stories. You tell bad stories, I don't watch. I got rid of my Disney subscription. Like I said, right after Boba Fett. No, I'm sorry, right after Mandalorian. Like, I don't need this. This isn't good. They're just, just telling terrible stories. They're not thinking this stuff through. This is this is stupid. <laughs> right? This is stupid. And it got worse and worse and worse. And now they got this acolyte thing. It's like, oh, bro. Just, just horrible. You don't need me to tell you about what's going on out there. And this is just season three is airing right now as I'm speaking. You know, it's it's uh, 9, 10 p.m. Eastern time in the United States, uh, June 11. Hey, bro, it's just horrible. But one thing I wanted to show you guys, because it's, this isn't about DEI and all that kind of stuff, man. True Star Wars fans don't care about sexual orientation. They don't care about color because there's all sorts of they're green people. It's purple people. They're blue people. It's all kind of color people. You know, p- different colors, different shades, different species in that world. They don't care about that. They don't care that it's a strong female lead. They don't care. They're used to it. All they care about is a good story. All they care about is someone who has respect for th- that world and can tell a great story and expand on that world. That's all they care about. So I wanted to um, show you guys something. This is. Uh, from a YouTube channel that does reactions. And this is a reaction to uh, The Mandalorian. I forget what season it was, but it was the season finale where, you know, The Mandalorian and all his people were trapped, looked like all was lost. And then someone came to help. There was someone coming, right? And this is that episode. And this is the people who are watching this episode, the people that they ever made this review based on. These are the folks who are the Star Wars fans. And and this this it just to me this really sums up where Star Wars fans are. Pay attention to who these people are. Like, look when they cut from you know from from fan to fan to fan. There's black people. There's old people. There's young people. I'm sure there are gay people, straight people, and everything in between. Just pay attention. Now, and some of you guys have probably already seen this, but I just I just wanted to show this. So I want to get out there as someone who's just a fan of good stories that can show, and maybe someone from Disney will see this. It's like, bro, the reason you guys are struggling is because you're telling garbage stories. You're hiring extremely overpaid people who don't have a creative bone in their body. This is my opinion. And the folks are not going to take it. In fact, they're done. They're done. The fan score on Rotten Tomatoes is what, 30-something percent? You're down to the absolute hardcore 1% of the 1% base. And, the, and after tonight, you're probably going to lose half of them. But let's check this out. It's a blaster there! Oh, Carrie, you idiot. Really? Really? This show stresses me out so much. Can you start doing punches it? Gonna punch it. Oh my god, them and they're punching. They can punch down blast doors. Oh my god, look at his face. It's like he's having an orgasm. It's about to happen. Something's gonna happen. All right, who's showing up to save y'all? Who's showing up to help y'all? I swear, if a fucking Jedi shows up on the other end, I'm gonna be happy. We don't even have time to get to a Jedi at this point. Right? These are the hardcore of the hardcore fans. They love the story, they know this universe, they know this world. Right. And you see them, they're questioning it. Like they they care about everything. They not only do they care about the story, they care about the, the costumes, they care about the casting, uh, they care about the reality of the story, i.e., you can't have a fire in outer space, not even in the Star Wars world. Right? You can't have a fire in outer space. And if you're gonna try to have a fire out in outer space, it has to be a plasma fire or something like that. Yeah, borrow that from Star Trek. But anyway, let's keep going. Somebody <laughs> X-Wing? An X-Wing. <gasps> what? One X-Wing? 
Great. One X-Wing? Is it Luke? Luke flies an X-Wing. Please be Luke Skywalker. Is this Luke Skywalker? Luke had that ship. Is that R2-D2 in the back? No way. Was that Red 5? It can't be. No way. It can't be, right? It can't be Luke, can it? I think it's actually fucking happening. Shannon? Matthew? Shannon? Do you see how excited they are? And bro, again, I'm no expert, but I think Red 5 was just a call sign, bro. But I get you. It's like, is that Red 5? Is that the very X-Wing that he used to blow up the Death Star? Possibly. You see how into the story they are. These people love this world. If you make the core audience happy, if they accept what you're doing and they go crazy over it, that means people like me are going to just absolutely adore the story, right? This is what Disney got wrong. Adam? Oh, Adam. Oh, did we call this? Is it Luke? Is it him? That could not be Luke. Don't give me hope, bro. Well, does he know something? He's recognizing somebody with the force is coming. It's a Jedi. It's a Jedi. Could it be Luke? Fuck no, there ain't no way it could be Luke, is it? I don't know what the timeline of this shit is. Dude, my heart. Exactly. Exactly. Could it be Luke? It could be Luke. It's not a it's not a a given. Like you look at the timeline. Well, who could it be? We know it's not Ahsoka. She's already been part of this storyline. It could be Ventress. Does she turn good? Is she still around? We don't know. It could be other Jedi who survived Order 66. So they're they're like, okay, who could it be? They're thinking. Who could it be? Right? Heart is pounding. Dude, my heart. My fucking heart. I'm gonna do it with my hands. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. 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 Who is that? Who the fuck is that? Who is this? Oh my god, it's Luke. Oh, it's oh, gotta be Luke. Luke. Oh my god, dude. If it's Luke, I'm gonna cry, dude. Do not tease me like this. <laughs> Is that Luke? It is, isn't it? It is. It's Luke. Oh my god, it is. Oh my god, it is. It's Luke Skywalker. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> what? I have chills. I have goosebumps. <laughs> yes! Oh my god! A green lightsaber! It's a green lightsaber. Oh, oh my goodness. It's Luke! It's fucking Luke! Holy shit! Oh fuck! Oh my god! Get the fuck out of here! I can't believe they're doing this! That is epic! The gloved hand, the green saber. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know why I'm crying. It's happening! It's happening! The actual. Bro. Do you see how excited and happy and pleased and emotional these folks are because they are bought into the story? This would be the first time you've seen Luke Skywalker since the original trilogy, right? This is the story of Luke Skywalker that no one knows about. Like, what did he do after the Death Star? You have to get into the comic books to find out. And these folks, got, they, they're in the comic books. They know. And they're like, this is Luke. They finally get to see him on the big screen doing his Jedi thing, just wrecking shop. But they're still not sure. Like, is it him? Is it not him? Great storytelling. Oh, well, you did it. I need to, like, calm down. I can't freaking breathe. <laughs> this is exactly what I wanted to see. <laughs> no! No! Took the hits. Thank heavens. You piece of shit. Don't you fucking dare kill yourself. Yeah, you fucking wish, mate. Oh, Grogu, you know, you know who it is. Most powerful fucking Jedi in the galaxy. That's who we force timed. Oh, that was so good. This is incredible. He is making them look like regular stormtroopers yeah, right now, literally. and I am. Here for it. Dude, I'm gonna fucking cry. Oh my god, I'm crying so much. <laughs> oh my god, dude. This is like the Rogue One Vader scene. Oh my god, he's gonna have his Vader moment. That's fucking Luke! Yes! Woo. Yes! Oh, he came in ready, he bro. Straight through. We never really got to see him like this. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, I'm fucking done. Ooh, Crush. Papa like. Oh my God! Holy crap!
Sakura. It's a force choke, isn't it? This is do you see these people are 100% bought in? They're having a moment. Like I said, pay attention to the folks, man. I'm hearing accents. I'm hearing maybe Australian, New Zealand accents, right? I'm it's just, there are dudes like young black guys in America, old black dudes in America, right? There are women here. There are people from all over the world sharing this moment, watching this thing going crazy going crazy i remember when i watched this episode but we, we'll talk about that here in a second it's too epic i just can't believe what i'm seeing i wonder how luke's gonna look like is it cg luke sebastian stan that has to be sebastian stan right oh my god please let it be sebastian stan oh god, we're gonna find out right now aren't we <laughs> oh yes oh, wow, wow, wow. i'm losing my mind i can't believe it man Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Did they just like de age Mark Hamill? They just CG'd him. That's CGI Mark Hamill? Yo! Oh my god. Oh my god, the music, the music. Fucking music as well. Fuck you, bro. Luke's theme, dude. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. Oh my god, they nailed him. That CG is really good. He looks amazing. <clears throat> Perfect. Are you a Jedi? I am. Nick, I'm the Jedi. He's the fucking Jedi. That's fucking Luke Skywalker. I will give my life to protect the child, but he will not be safe until he masters his abilities. Okay, it looks a little iffy there. Looks a little off. A little janky, but not bad. Oh, this is such a bittersweet moment. How do we reconcile with Grogu leaving? I'll see you again. I promise. Will he though? I fucking hope so. Yeah, you have. Oh, Grogu, you'll be all right, buddy. I hope we got them two saying goodbye as well. Fuck this episode, man. This fucking episode. I can't pass out. <gasps> he's taking the helmet off. Taking his helmet off. Oh, he's showing his face. Oh, no. This is powerful because there's a reason Mandalorians, certain types of Mandalorians, don't remove their helmet. They don't show their faces, right? They covered all this in the storyline. This is a very, very poignant moment. It shows how the Mandalorian, how he really feels about this young, force-sensitive creature, right? Baby Yoda, Rogu. Amazing storytelling. They did it just right. They waited for the payoff. And these are the folks that are enjoy having this moment around planet Earth at the same time. Outstanding, outstanding storytelling. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's letting him see his face. First time the child's seen his face. The first time they've looked into each other's eyes. Oh, my God. I'm not crying. You're crying. This is too freaking much. Let it out. Let it out. <laughs> This is so beautiful. It's like, you're beautiful, daddy. You're a handsome man. I am uncontrollably not oh okay. God. Same. Such a fucking nerd. <laughs> oh my God. This is the greatest fucking shit that's ever happened this year. All right, go. It's time to go. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, he doesn't want to go. Oh, I don't want them to say goodbye to each other. Stop it! Stop it! Come on, bro. Oh, R2! 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 They are too. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. God damn it. I'm so emotional. This is too much. Oh, what the fuck, man? What is this show right now, dude? What is going on? What is this show down to? This is insane. Already has more screen time in this than he did in the sequel trilogy. Are him and R2 about to be best buddies? Oh, he's gonna be besties with R2? Oh, they're gonna be great friends. Guys, I can't deal with these emotions.
May the force be with you. Oh, dude. Luke Skywalker holding Grogu, baby Yoda. Oh, this is so good. This is special. This really fucking sucks. Oh, fuck me. Shit. Oh, this is so heartbreaking. Yo, I'm in fucking tears. Yeah. This might be the most emotional moment in Star Wars ever. Oh, my God. The show. I love this show. What happens now? Oh, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> we love you, baby Yoda. And we'll always remember you. Till next time, friend. See you around, kid. Mando. That's it. We're not going to see him again now. Now, do you believe that these people who are all over the world, all sorts of genders, all sorts of everything, gay, straight, whatever, everything in between, do you think that they're going to walk away from Star Wars because there's a strong female lead? or because there's a fat Jedi, or because there's, you know, flames in, in space. The reason they're walking away is because none of that stuff I just said fits in that world. That's why they're walking away. The reason they're walking away is because the story of the Acolyte, for instance, is a horrible story. The reason they're walking away is that, like, Ahsoka... Her series, and I, that's my favorite character in that world, Ahsoka Tano. They did her dirty. They did her dirty. I canceled my Disney Plus subscription after this episode we just watched. I canceled it. I'm like, there's no way they're going to do better than this. And there's no way they're going to maintain this level of storytelling because of all the stuff that they're just trying to put out there. And they just assume if the Star Wars fans are going to watch it. They will watch it if it's at least decent, at least halfway decent. They're putting out absolute trash written by people who don't even know the storyline, like casting people who have don't care anything about Star Wars. I don't have a problem with that, but be an actor and learn and, and learn, at least go back and be aware of it. This is why no one is watching Star Wars. This is why Disney is hemorrhaging money. This is why if Iger doesn't do anything, if Bob Iger doesn't do anything, Disney is going to disappear, in my opinion. And if they don't fire Kathleen Kennedy, because she's the one behind these projects, if they don't fire her, then they ain't serious about making money. Wall Street's going to realize they ain't serious about what making money, and Wall Street's going to stop investing in Disney, and it's going to be the whole spiral from there. So that's it. I just wanted to jump on to talk about it, man. You know, I've been looking at what's going on out here. And this is someone who's not, I'm not a crazy Star Wars fan, but I love good stories. And the bottom line, Disney is not telling good stories. The people that Disney hired to run Star Wars, they're not telling good stories. They have run the franchise into the ground. Can they recover? Yeah. All they got to do just tell a good story. Hire the correct people. And the, the fans of Star Wars will come. Simple as that. And there's so many good characters out there that they haven't touched. There's so many good stories out there that they can tell. Simple as that. Well, that's it. That's all I got for this short. I might come back again and, and uh, do another version of this. Um, I want to show the same reactions to, same people reacting to um, Ahsoka when she was in the world between worlds and you had the Anakin reveal which was another great moment in Star Wars history or Star Wars lore that was a great story that part right there in Ahsoka but you know they they messed up towards the end with the zombie uh, storm stormtroopers and you had Fat Thrawn and he looked all funny and the 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 night witches or whatever. Anyway, that's just another story for another day. I hope you guys enjoy that, man. I'm DL saying this was a DL short. I'm gonna talk to you later. Peace.